second lesson, Matthew chapter 22, verse 37. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Brethren, the above passage explains the kind of person that will rule the world. Any person who desires to be among the rulers should love God with all his heart, with all his soul, and with all his mind. Such is the kind of person in whom God will abide, and he too will also abide in God. It is because of man's departure from his first and original love for God that he has something against him. God himself is love, and if we possess the virtue of love for him, then we will rule and reign with him. In, in God's rule and kingdom, there is neither black nor white, neither young nor old, it's neither man nor woman. That is the kingdom of God and is Christ where he will reign forever and ever. Let mankind do whatever he pleases to solve his problems, but instead of solving them, the problems would be compounded. Let a man kill, let him steal, loot, indulge in idolatry, and initiate into various secret cults. His problems will remain with him except he repents and follow God. The creator and owner of heaven and earth is here on earth quietly watching how rogues struggle for what rightly belongs to God. Is it possible that God would retire into heaven above leaving the vast expanse of earth desolate? Yet, if anything should happen to man now, he would first call on God to help him and not his money, houses, or fleet of cars. If all, irrespective of tribes and tongues, our status and faith should go to God, on bended knees now, the world will be in peace and prosperity. Man, juju, food, money and other mundane things are completely useless. God promised to rule and reign forever. In Isaiah chapter 22, it reads, The word of Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem, and it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountain and shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow into it, and many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths, for out of Zion shall go forth the law, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem, and he shall judge among the nations, and shall rebuke many people, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning forks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. 
O house of Jacob, come ye and let us walk in the light of the Lord. Therefore thou hast forsaken thy people and the house of Jacob, because they be replenished from the east, and are soothsayers like the Philistines, and they please themselves in the children of strangers. Their land also is full of silver and gold, neither is there any end of their treasures. Their land is also full of, house, of horses, neither is there any end of their chariots. Their land also is full of idols. They worship the work of their own hands, that which their own fingers have made, and the mean man boweth down, and the great man humbleth himself. Therefore forgive them not. Enter into the rock and hide thee in the lost in the dust for fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty. The lofty looks of man shall be humbled, and the hung and the haughtiness of man shall be bowed down, and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. For the day of the Lord of all shall be upon every one that is proud and lofty, and upon every one that is lifted up, and he shall be brought low, and upon all the cedars of Lebanon that are nigh, that are high, and lifted up, and upon all the odds of Bashan, and upon all the high mountains, and upon all the hills that are lifted up, and upon every high tower, and upon every fence wall, and upon all the ships of Tarshish, and upon all pleasant pictures, and the loftiness of man shall be bowed down, and the heartiness of man shall be made low, and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day, and the idols he shall utterly abolish, and they shall go into the holes of the rocks, and into the caves of the earth for fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty when he ariseth to shake terribly the earth. In that day a man shall cast his idols of silver and his idols of gold which he made each one for himself to worship to the moles and to the bots and to the bats to go into the clefts of the rocks and into the tops of the ragged rocks for fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty when he ariseth to shake terribly the earth Cease ye from man whose breath is in his nostril, for wherein is he to be accounted of. That was in Isaiah chapter 2. Brethren, this is the era of the Holy Spirit and his reign, he has completely brought down the activities of man. All should stop roaming from left to right and to suffer 
as though the Creator is not here with us. We are not fatherless. We have a Father, the ever-caring and ever-loving Father. If only we obey Him, all our problems will be solved. It is shameful and unthinkable that man should resort to worshipping logs of wood, stones, and other things created by God. Has Juju ever created anything? Instead of man to recognize and appreciate the wisdom and power of God, he attributes the things that happen daily to evil forces. It is only God who is capable of doing what human beings cannot do. Our Lord Jesus Christ made the dumb to talk and the deaf to hear. Then, instead of the people to praise God, they rather attributed the power to build the bulb. It was for this same reason that God was provoked when the Israelites made themselves a graven image and worshipped it, God on his part did not waste time to destroy them in their thousands. This is the era of the Holy Spirit. People should refrain from fornication, from idolatry and all forms of vices so that his bountiful grace may be granted to us. The prodigal world, brethren, the inhabitants of the world are prodigal children. The prodigal son only returned to his father after he had squandered his wealth and had lost every hope of survival. Despite his iniquities, his father did not hesitate to welcome him back into the family with pomp and pageantry. That is the kind of reception that awaits any man who is penitent of his sins and returns to God. Return therefore all ye men of the world for your father seeketh for you. Except all comply with this Instruction, peace and prosperity shall continue to elude the world. God had declared that if any should, if, that if any should put in with, with his heart, it would surely make him a dwelling place. In the person. God had declared that if any should keep him in his heart, he would surely make the dwelling place in the person. This shows that God has no other dwelling place apart from the heart of man. And except man loves God, there is no other source of salvation for him. When you abide in God and he in you, then will you be one with him. And he will then take dominion over your whole body. God rules in peace, in love in truth and mercy. His rulership is different from human rulership. The word of God has neither beginning nor end. Let reference be made to the golden text again. Golden text, Luke chapter 14 verse 33. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. Beloved, the above injunction is loud and clear. 
you have to forsake lies, deceit, hatred, idolatry, stealing, division, arrogance, and disbelief in your Creator. You should surrender everything to God. Except you do this, you cannot be his disciple and you cannot inherit his kingdom. Repercussion awaits the world. Brethren, you may have read about a certain man who had a vineyard which was fenced round and left into the care of the field keepers or servant. When it was time for harvest, the owner of the field sent laborers into the farm to do the harvesting, but the field keepers would not allow them. They captured and killed all the messengers sent by the owner. The man again sent another set of messengers, much greater in number than the first group. All were captured and slain. The man finally decided to send forth his firstborn son to the field. The people quickly descended on him, believing that he would eventually own the farm if allowed if not allowed, if allowed to escape. So they killed the heir apparent to the farm. They did all this with the hope of gaining ownership of the farm. The question now is, upon all what they did, were they able to seize the farm from the owner? In the final analysis, Christ asked them what would happen to such wicked servants when the rightful owner of the field finally arrives. The listeners replied that he would destroy all such servants and give them and give the field over to other servants who are faithful to him. Time for recompense, brethren. Whatever pleases a man to do, let him do. Let him invent more sophisticated weapons and erect iron walls around himself. The owner of the field has come to pay each person according to his work. Those of you who claim ownership of the land, of the trees, of human beings and other things in the world should hold firmly to them and wait for God's reaction. God is the creator and owner of everything in heaven and on earth. In the whole world, it is only Christ that said that all that belongs to his Father also belongs to him. This is because he is one with the Father any person who can proudly say, I and my father are one, can equally claim ownership of whatever belongs to God. Love one another and surrender yourself and everything around you to him and all will be well with you. God is responsible for all that happens, brethren. People trace the problems and starvation in the world today to certain persons. The question is, what about the problems in your house? Who is responsible? None is responsible for the famine and other problems in the world. Did God not promise to shake the earth? In Revelation chapter 3 verses 8 to 11 it reads, I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, 
and that not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them and dwell upon the to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold I come quickly, hold that fast which thou hast, and that no man take thy crown. Brethren, only those who believe in him shall live. This is the kingdom of God in which righteousness dwells. What is held uppermost is righteousness and joy. Man had either to cast his hope on another man, which has invariably spelt doom upon himself. Loving God with all your heart, with all your soul and mind is the only way to goodness. Brethren, change your mind now and love God with all your heart, with all your soul and mind and he will surely manifest his goodness in you. It is written, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof the world and they that dwell therein, for he had founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. That was in Psalm chapter 24, verses 1 to 5. Brethren, anyone who is desirous of reigning with him should give him total love. Otherwise, he will labor in vain. Except you forsake all that you have, all what you had claimed to be and whatever power you claim to have, forsake everything and surrender yourself to God. The illustration of the slave and his master, brethren, this is a familiar story I have been telling you. Once there lived a certain man who bought a slave who was very hard working and so became very prosperous. In turn, the slave bought many other slaves and became even richer than his master. It became the talk of the town that a slave has become richer than his master. As a result, the slave became arrogant and head swollen. After a lot of noise about the wealth of the slave compared to that of his master, it came to pass that a day was declared for stock taking. So everybody in the community assembled to know exactly who was richer, the slave or his master. When the people gathered, the slave was given the opportunity first to stake, to take stock of his property. As he counted all that belonged to him, the people marveled and clapped in anticipation of a complete victory over his master. 
After he had concluded counting his property, the master stood up to take his own stock. He enumerates the few things he had and then added the slave together with all his property. The whole arena was quiet and the people nodded in agreement. Everybody was stunned. This is exactly what is happening to mankind with God. Empty did man come into the world and empty too will he depart. Everything you see here in the world will remain behind to the original owner who is God. Man has struggled engaging himself in various jobs, some of them odd, just to get rich. In the end, he departs, taking none of the things that he accumulated to himself. Normally, God valid, normally, God would love you to scorn when you claim ownership of the women, of the women, the men, all the children and money and all other things in your possession. Many preachers and laborers in the vineyard of God have abandoned their works in search of private businesses for quick gains. That is the height of foolishness. You should now realize that the very business which you had abandoned the work of God to enable you to pursue belongs to God. Your body and soul belong to God. Everything in the world belongs to God. Beloved, I shall not take you any further. It is said that a stroke of the cane is sufficient for the wise. He that has ears should hear what the Holy Spirit has departed, has imparted to the world. May the Lord bless his holy word. Amen. End of quote. Peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father.